Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this episode of Adorama TV. Today, we're taking a look at the Nikon D3200 camera, and this is a very affordable entry-level kit for those of you looking to get into DSLR shooting. Now, it's a 24 megapixel camera, real digital SLR body with removable lenses, so you can upgrade the lens as you go. The model that I shot with is their kit. It comes with an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. It does have the VR option for vibration reduction. What's nice about that is when you are shooting handheld, this can dramatically cut down on the softness or the blurriness of the photo. So that's just a simple switch there on the side. You could turn VR on or off with just a simple push of the button. Remember, when shooting on a tripod, leave VR off. But if you're going to go handheld, turn it on. Now this is a 650 kit, very reasonable. The body itself is about a pound. Adding the lens, I'm gonna push that up a little bit. Now, what exactly is included in the kit? Well, there's the camera body itself. Again, very reasonable, about one pound in weight. Comes with a good kit lens, 18 to 55 millimeter. This is gonna give you nice coverage for things like pictures for portraits or shooting wide at events. You might want to add another lens down the line, but as a starting lens, this is very reasonable. It's nice and fast too, 3.5 to 5.6, does have that vibration reduction. You also get everything you need with the battery, the kit, the camera strap, the body cap, the manual, all those things that you would expect. Now, if you want Wi-Fi, you can attach an optional adapter. This is the W1A. It will allow you to then go ahead and send these directly to your smartphone or computer over Wi-Fi, which can be useful. Now, shooting. This camera does have a nice wide range of ISO, 100 to 6400, so that's going to open up a lot of things. But what I think is really nice is the fact that it has a guided mode. So when you switch that on over to guide, what you're going to see is that it's going to walk you through some of the key functions. You're not going to have to necessarily make decisions, rather it's going to let you know what sort of options you should choose. And it's going to help you pick the right settings, and that's really quite useful. Another thing that's nice is, is that the scene settings can be set to auto. So if I flip this over to true auto mode, what's going to happen is it's going to intelligently switch between the different scene settings. This is also nice because it even works with live view, which is newer. Now, there's a bunch of different optimized scene modes here. You've got your standards like portrait and nighttime portrait, which are great for shooting people, landscape, but there's two I really love. The first one is child, and what's nice about child is that it does a really good job with action. So as your subject is moving, or you are moving, and you try to line it up, your subject and the camera needs to be stable enough before it will fire. So if the kid's running around, jumping in action, when they lock in just long enough, it will actually take the picture. This is gonna cut down on blurry photos, and as you just hold that there, when it finds something stable, it will actually lock and fire. The other one is the sports mode, and this is great for shooting events or other type of content that you might need. And with sports mode, what I really like is basically it's a high speed burst mode. So if you're covering sporting events, whether it's your favorite team or your kid running in track or wrestling, playing basketball, volleyball, etc., this is going to give you that ability to shoot in high speed burst mode, and it does a nice job. With 11 point autofocus, this does a good job of tracking the action in the scene. Let's talk about video, one of my favorite things. The nice thing here is that video is one touch recording. So you don't have to dig into a menu or go looking. You could simply hit the red record button and you're recording video. You don't have to flip over to live view or flip a switch and then push another button to start. This is great when the action calls. Maybe you're shooting photos, all of a sudden something cute happens or something big in action. You want to grab it, one push button, you're recording. Speaking of video and recording, you get both 1080 and 720 recording using the AVC Intro recording format, very, very broadly compatible. The good news here is this is going to work with lots of editing systems. So if you are using consumer software, Windows Movie Maker, iMovie, AVC Intro is going to be compatible. If you need to go ahead and bring this AVC video coding in and you want to use it with other formats like Pro Tools using Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere Pro, it's going to work there. Now, another thing that's going to stand out for a lot of you who are newer to shooting video is that this does have a robust full-time autofocus as well as exposure control. This means that as you're walking around with the camera, tracking the action, it will do a good job of keeping the subject in focus and compensating. Now, this is not desirable for those of you who want to take total control over your shooting, but if you are looking for the option there for the camera to assist you, you've got it. 
total auto levels, everything else. If you do want manual control, you get that too. You can run in an external microphone, which is great, and you get the ability to adjust the levels and totally set them manually. This is gonna really help you out. Now, let's talk about recording formats. This is gonna use the SD cards there, and it's gonna work with both the standard as well as high-speed cards. Very, very easy to use, very, very common format. Speaking of formats, it does shoot a 12-bit RAW file, which is really awesome. Now, a lot of you might not be into RAW developing, but as you grow in photography, using RAW, using tools like Photoshop Elements or even iPhoto, you can work with RAW photos, as well as with other professional tools, Aperture, Lightroom, Photoshop. All of these love RAW files, and they give you great options for recovering exposure, sharpening details, and everything else. If you need to, you can shoot JPEG or RAW plus JPEG. Now the camera itself does have lots of different standard controls. So you've got the different type of picture styles, standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape. All of these are very, very common, included with the camera. So if you've ever used another Nikon camera, you'll find those as well. You can shoot with those on or apply them afterwards to an image to make a tweak. Now, when you're shooting, the nice thing here is that the camera is very fast. The shutter speed goes up to 4,000th, and it's nice and quick for capturing action. You can actually go ahead and do up to a 30-second exposure as well if shooting in very low light. You do have great options like exposure compensation. However, you don't get the ability to shoot bracketed if you need to, so you're not going to be doing in-camera HDR. But you can manually change the exposure with exposure compensation. That works nicely. You also have the ability to change how the shutter releases. So of course, we can do simple single frame shooting or we get the ability to actually go into continuous shooting or timer shooting, lots of different options. One of the more popular ones too is the quiet shutter, which means that when you're out shooting at an event, maybe uh, it's a recital or you're at a wedding and you don't want the camera making a loud click, 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 you can actually switch it to a quiet mode, which is normally a pro only feature that you'll find in this body. Now, when we're shooting with this camera, we're going to get up to four frames per second. You're going to see this typically when you're shooting with manual focus or you're doing shutter priority, and that's fine. You do get nice fast shutter speeds, though, which are going to come in handy, and this does work very well for capturing action. Now, I want to walk you through some of the menus really quick. I think there's some good things here that you're definitely going to want to see. Let's go ahead and switch into manual mode for a moment. Notice very intuitive menu system and I can now step through and start to modify. Using the command dials, I could change the shutter speed. And the camera is giving me updated information, letting me know when I have a proper exposure. Now, the menu system itself is very familiar to anyone who shot Nikon. Standard menus, many of the same choices you're used to seeing on the pro bodies. The ability to change picture controls the ability to choose if you're shooting RAW or RAW plus JPEG, as well as different quality settings for JPEG. I do like that we have several different white balance presets that let me accommodate for different styles of shooting, as well as the ability to manually set my own custom white balance. We do have great control over ISO. We can also turn on auto ISO if we'd like the camera to intelligently adjust as we change to different shooting settings, and that's really useful for a new shooter. Now there are some great controls for things like distortion. This can help with wide angle distortion. And we do have in-camera noise reduction to cut down on the graininess for shooting in low light. Really good controls for metering here. Same sort of metering styles that pros use on the pro bodies here to help you properly measure the scene. And this gives you the ability to change how the camera measures light when it's determining its calculations. And we can even control external flash or change how the internal flash is going to behave. Now, you will find a wide range of settings in here, including the ability to adjust the brightness, step in and change if you're shooting for NTSC or PAL, different types of video mode. And one of the things that I really like is the fact that all of my recent settings are on a menu here. So if I've made a recent change and I want to go back and modify it, I don't have to plow through the menu system. Rather, I could see the things that I most recently updated. So very, very flexible menu system. And we do have the use of a command dial on the back, as well as several physical buttons on the camera to help you access the core settings that you're going to need. Who's this camera for? This is a great starting point for those of you interested in stepping up to DSLR shooting. 
What I really like here is that you are getting the true DSLR camera with a removable lens, giving you the flexibility to go ahead and grow. You could step up and add additional lenses. You could start to use pro accessories like an off-camera flash. You're getting a very reasonable camera with lots of control. I really think that some of the guided mode features as well as the scene modes are going to help those that are new to DSLR shooting, but this camera does offer plenty of manual control to help you as you progress in skill and start to want to get more out of DSLR style shooting. For Adorama TV, my name's Rich Harrington. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.